After being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February, and we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists, then there would be third world countries, now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids, and then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. This is a system, he told me, that would never protect anyone. Even back then, he talked about suitcase bombs. He talked about chemical, viral, bacterial, bat biological warfare that these space-based weapons would never protect us against. And then he told me that, in fact, if you travel around the world, which I did after he died in 1977, I met with people in over 100 countries who were friends. They didn't want to build space-based weapons. I became a space and missile defense consultant. And I worked with people around the world. I became a, an advisor to the People's Republic of China. They don't want to build a space-based weapon system. And he told me back then that they didn't. He said, go to Russia. They're considered to be the enemy. I got on a plane by myself. When I got to Russia, I had a list of people that I had read out of the newspaper. Chernenko was in office then. He was the only one I didn't get a chance to meet. They introduced me to everyone when I got there. And when I got back, I said, oh my Lord, this man is telling the truth. There are, is no threat. And I've been waiting until this day for 27 years. And I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me that in the, as a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons. And now we should expect the spin because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon, then we have to consider that they do have these weapons. So now they do have these weapons, so now we have to build these weapon systems. And that's the formula, except that it's all based on a lie. And we have witnesses here today that have shown you that these extraterrestrial beings, that these crafts that have come here are now not UFOs, they're identified flying objects, and we know that they have beings in them. And we have witnesses here who have told you that they can shut down our missile silos, they can stop a rocket going into space that's a test. We have witnesses here who have worked in the classified departments who have the courage to come forward here to support what Werner von Braun told me back in 1974 to 77. And I will testify before the Congress that when I founded the Institute for Security and Cooperation in Outer Space, which I shut down a few years ago because I didn't believe we had a chance with this huge, integrated around the world, complex weapon system, that we had any chance at all of transforming that war industry into a space industry that could provide benefits like Dr. Greer has said of global warming, we can end that situation of that problem, we can end the energy crisis, we can put, build now non-polluting technologies. Werner von Braun used to tell me that we could have cars back then that w drove around off the ground. He described this to me on beams so that we have no pollution on this planet. And we can solve the problems of the people that are urgent and potential and the other animals and the other cultures on Earth and in space. And we can end the arms race without dislocating the industry jobs, without disrupting the economy by transforming, Werner von Braun told me, the war industry into a global cooperative space industry that will provide, he said, 
Finally, more jobs and profits on this planet than during any hot or cold wartime, more products and services that can be applied directly to solving the problems of this planet, and we can have a whole planet now that lives on pe in peace on Earth with all the cultures on Earth and with all the extraterrestrial cultures in space. And these are words that Werner von Braun told me in 1974, and I will testify before the Congress under oath about everything I have said and more. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank each of the witnesses and for your patience. We're running about uh, 50 minutes late, and I do apologize for that. I want to emphasize that all of these witnesses each could speak for probably anywhere from two to five hours about what they have witnessed. We we're trying to give you a snapshot. We have another 400 of these witnesses. I have carried this burden for eight years. I'm now giving it to you, the American people and the people of the world, to take it forward. What I'd like to do now is open uh, the audience uh, for questions from the media. Uh, you may address them to me or to an individual witness as, as you deem appropriate. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Maribel Gonzalez with the former Mexican newspaper. I have three questions. One is, if you... If, yes, I wanted to know if, if there are laws in this country that in some way allowed this kind of secrecy or not. And then I wanted to know if there's a, a need to change any kind of law. And the next one I wanted to ask you if you may is who is profiting from this secrecy that maintains um, in secret the solution to the energy crisis. I mean, well, obviously, yeah. let me get to those, okay, quickly, because we are on short on time. First of all, I think initially there was a, an appropriate uh, national security apparatus in place in the 40s during the Truman and also Eisenhower years. By the late Eisenhower years, we have a testimony from Brigadier General Stephen Lubkin, still a practicing attorney, that by the late Eisenhower years that he had lost control of these projects primarily because of the compartmentalization into the military-industrial complex operative word industrial. Um, there are corporations such as SAIC, Lockheed Martin, Northrop, and others that deal specifically with this issue with advanced energy and propulsion systems connected to UFOs. And I think that what has happened from, from the best we can tell uh, from insiders that have briefed me for now about eight years is that we have lost control of these projects from a constitutional law perspective because the infrastructure within military intelligence and corporate channel is so well funded and so complex and labyrinthine that there are compartments within compartments within compartments and the people who are in the Congress who make inquiries and in fact President Clinton when he made inquiries were simply denied access as you heard earlier that President Carter was denied access. Uh, on your other question um, I would say that in terms of profiting from the status quo uh, you know, big oil uh, there are certain geopolitical and financial infrastructures uh, that would uh, not welcome a, a definitive replacement to the fossil fuels. Uh, we can tell, I will tell you, and we can prove this with other scientists who are ready to come forward, that we already have a complete replacement for any fossil fuels or ionizing nuclear power plants. We don't need them. We haven't needed them probably have not needed them since the time I was born. Now, of course, this is a major issue. You're talking a multi-trillion dollar uh, global infrastructure change. Uh, and so this does hit the alarm bells at the National Security Council economics uh, area. Uh, however, what is more serious to the national security, keeping the status quo or letting ourselves go into a global ecosystem collapse? and running out of fossil fuels and having massive rolling blackouts, not just in California, but globally. We have got to do something about this and soon, and that's why we are advocating open hearings in the Congress. Other uh, media, please. Yes, sir. I just want to know if anybody at the UN is looking into this. Uh, I personally met with uh, uh, Boutros Boutros Ghali's uh, wife, Aliyah Ghali, uh, who uh, said that her husband was quite concerned about this. Uh, this was in the 1990s. Uh, since then, we know that there have been other people at the UN who have made inquiries. The problem is the UN has no mandate to deal with this. It needs to be.